Hey, what's happening, beautiful people? Here's a pretty exciting video. We're looking at people that shockingly time traveled in Islam. Today's video is going to be an exciting one. We all know Albert Einstein in his theories of relativity. Yeah. What if I tell you Einstein is late in the story? Einstein's theory of relativity says that time and space are no different, just the two different aspects of space-time. Hmm. If you can travel in space, you can travel in time. For example, time slows down for objects moving closer to the speed of light. If you travel with the speed of light through space and come back after 100 years have passed on Earth, you will be still young and your class fellow would probably have died. Quran narrates events of time travel for centuries ago and science explains them today. This freshens our Iman. In the words of verse 5 of Surah al sajda he regulates the affair from heaven to the earth. Then shall it ascend to him in a day, the measure of which is a thousand years of what you count. There are four time travel events narrated with full vigor and detail in Quran. We will discuss two of them in this video. You will have to visit the part two of this video. Okay. The Quran contains a parable that is one of the most popular, quoted and commented events in the Islamic tradition. It relates a person coming across a town in ruins. He wonders how will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring the dead to life on the day of judgment. According to some Islamic scholars, the person mentioned in the story was Prophet Uzair. The story tells us that the Prophet Uzair fell asleep under a tree. He woke up after a hundred years. His donkey was turned into bones and there was nothing around him. But his food was fresh. Ah. Time had traveled differently for all these subjects. Science tells us that the huge masses create strong gravitational fields and near them, time proceeds slowly. So there, science explains it years and years after Quran narrates the incident and even more years after the incident actually happened. When Uzair alayhi salam come to know of this, he said, I know that God hath power over all things. There is yet another tradition where Allah showed us gravitational time dilation. It's about seven pious young men who delegated that Allah was the Lord of the heavens and the earth. And they would never call upon any deity other than him. Their people were to kill them for their beliefs or force them to worship other gods, putting their beliefs on Allah's mercy. They fled and hid in a cave. There they felt asleep. Quran narrates the what happened afterwards in the following words. When we awakened them, they asked each other, How long have you been here? We have been here for one day or part of one day. They answered, Your Lord knows best how long we stayed here. So let us send one of us with this money to the city. Let him fetch the good lawful food and buy some for us. Let him keep a low profile and attract no attention. About the time for which they lived in the cave, Quran says, they stayed in the cave 300 years. 300 increased years. By wow. and so, when one of them left the cave very carefully with a silver coin, what he sees is that the town has changed completely. When he showed the coin to the shopkeepers to buy food, it was found to be hundreds of years old. A thousand and four hundred years after the revelation of Quran, science explains this phenomenon by gravitational time dilation. Okay. Time traveled swiftly for the rest of the world, but very slowly for the seven men in the cave. Even we did not have scientific theories to prove them, we would still believe these events. But science explaining them is a proof that time travel is completely possible. We will discuss the throne of Sheba and Isra wal Mi'raj in the next part. Okay, Till then, so it's gonna be a part care. two. This subject is always fascinating because it breaks what we sort of understand in the conventional way of time and space. You know, we say, well, because these particular moments are happening, we look at and then say, well, you know, time is linear, it's going forward, things are moving, and that's that. Well, that's one way to look at it, but if you also look at it as, well, time doesn't actually really exist, time is sort of like a creation, and it, you use it to measure instances in 
the ever present now. That's the best way I can describe it. It's just happening now. And for some people, their experience of time is different. And for others, it's different. Some, you know, I guess you can in ways slow down or stop time or speed up time based off of how quickly you're traveling and I think there's another there's other ways to do it um, but I uh, don't want to dive too much into that and it's interesting though that the, the Quran does have these stories about you know time that passed by for people that thought that time didn't pass by everybody else it's like Whoa, it's almost like sleeping, you know, you're you're in your sleep and then you're like, wow, how long was I out for? Oh, yeah, probably like 30 minutes. And you look at the time like, whoa, four hours I was sleeping. What? It didn't even feel like four hours. It felt like I just fell asleep and got back up and so much time passed. But then, of course, someone can ask in that question, did time actually slow down or speed up or was just your perception of time? changed maybe time doesn't speed up maybe just perception of time speeds up and also another thing to look at is that if god can do everything and in these stories are found in the quran what if god just stopped that person's aging process like how the the, the his cells his body cells would work and operate and the oxygen that he needs and everything what if god just changed it miraculously in the whatever way god can do because islam teaches that god says be and it is so if god says be the same for 300 years boom you are so what happened time in a sense would continue in the conventional sense of that but that person just may have had and a miraculous experience that stopped them from dying and aging because God said so. So, couple ways to look at this, guys. Um, yeah, it, it's a hard subject to dive into. It's something that I'm still continuously exploring. You know, uh, time, space, and uh, you know the world of quantum physics, how how it relates, and everything. Um, but yeah, there's just some thoughts that came up. Uh, I think there's a couple ways to look at this, but I'm curious to know what you think guys. Sound off down below in the comment section. Join in on this conversation and as always, stay awesome and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Later.